Welcome to Electron Online and welcome to our quest in trying to understand Maxwell's equations a little bit more. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at what we call the differential form of Ampere's law. So let's take a look at the integral form to remind ourselves what that is and here it is. This is what we call the integral form, the line integral of the magnetic field dotted with the DL. Now DL is a small little line segment so we multiply the magnetic field times the line segment, if they're in the same direction, of course, and we get B times DL times the cosine of the angle between them, which typically would be zero if the B field is directed in the same way as the motion as we're integrating around a particular path of that B field. And in a, for example, if we have a current wire, here's a current a wire with a current running through it like this, and then we can imagine that there's going to be a magnetic field around the wire, that loops around the wire like that. Uh, so here's the wire and the magnetic field goes around it. It gets weaker as you go farther out. It gets stronger as you get closer in. So the magnetic field is in a circular direction around the wire. And then if we take the strength of the magnetic field and multiply it times a small little line segment. So let's take a small little line segment right here. We call that the DL. And notice that the little line segment is in the same direction as the B field everywhere we go. So if you multiply the B field times the line segment and then you integrate around that, and of course when you multiply two vectors together, you use a dot product like this. And if you do that, you get simply the strength of the B field at this distance away from the wire. So you say at a certain distance R away from the wire. And you multiply it times the circumference because DL integrated all the way around the line segment would be simply 2 pi R. And so the integral of that simply would be the strength of the B field times 2 pi times the radius. So that would be the integral of the left side of Maxwell's equation, which is also known as Ampere's law. And that always is equal to mu sub naught, which is the permittivity, no, not the permittivity, the permeability of free space times the current enclosed. So simply, this would then have to equal mu sub naught times the current inside, and that would be the current in the wire. Also, there is the second term in here, second term which we call the displacement current which actually has no real current in it but that was a situation where the magnetic field exists in a space and of course the magnetic field typically again would be a loop kind of like in a loop structure and if we have a changing electric field in a particular volume of space and we then we can imagine there'll be a magnetic field around that region where there's a changing electric field and so therefore when we have a change in the electric flux which is the same as saying a change in the electric field, multiply times the permeability, permeability and the permittivity of free space that also acts as if there's a current there and that also sets up a magnetic field. So Mag Maxwell understood this and added that to Ampere's law to make it complete. So how does that compare to the differential form of Maxwell's equation? So let me put a box around the differential form of Maxwell's equation. And notice it has roughly the same structure. Instead of having the integral here, we have what we call a curl. Uh, so it would be delta cross B, and we'll show you in a moment what that means, is equal to mu sub naught, like before, this is the permeability of free space, times the current density. Instead of writing the current enclosed, write the current density. So it would be the current per unit area. So current density is known as the current in that region divided by the cross-sectional area. And of course, if you think of a cross-sectional area right here, this would be, uh, and of course I'm going out to here, so I might as well take this whole area, area right here. So the area of a circle is simply equal to pi r squared. And so if we take the current in the wire divided by pi r squared, we have the current density in this region. Now here's where the two equations differ a little bit. This equation right here, the integral form, is more suited for a situation like this, where you have a single wire with a B field or a magnetic field around it. The differential form of the equation is not as suited for this situation and I will show you in a later video how there's a linkage that we can make between the two but it's actually more in tune with the situation where we have current flowing through a like a cylindrical region like that. Let's say we have a certain amount of current I running through the region then we can say that the current density J is equal to the current total current in this whole region divided by the cross-sectional area which would be pi r squared if we know this to be r right there and this is a circle region. So it would be better if you have a situation like this rather than this that you use the, dif the differential form rather than the integral form. But at some point I will show you that the two actually combine to a single equation that they really mean the same thing and I'll show you how we can make that connection in a later video. For now it's simply uh, good to know that 
it's better to use integral form in this form, probably better to use a differential form in that form, realizing that the current density is equal to the current divided by the area through which the current flows. Okay, so this here right here is called the curl of the vector B, and the curl can be defined by the circulation divided by the area. Now what does that mean? What does the circulation mean? Well, it turns out the circulation has a lot to do with that, what this integral right here is. And so let me show you what we mean by the term circulation. It actually is a term that Maxwell came up with because he thought it was a, a good way to describe what actually happens in this particular situation. So let's say that we have this region right here through which current flows. And so this region has what we call a current density, which means that anywhere within the region or on the edge of that region, there will be a magnetic field. So it doesn't matter where we go. We can go a small little cylinder inside and at the edge of that small little cylinder. So if I draw a small little cylinder, let me use a different color so that it shows up a little bit better. So, so let's say we imagine a small little cylinder in here. I want to know what the B field is right here. So I know that the B field will be directed in a circular path inside this region or on the edge of that region. Also outside that region, but let's not go there for now yet. We'll have to show you how that works later. So there's going to be a B field at that region at a distance R away from the center of that region. And so there's current flowing through there and it will have a certain current density. And so what we can do then is if we multiply the strength of the B field times the distance around that circular path, which sounds a whole lot like doing this thing again right here. Well, that's what we mean by the circulation. The circulation is simply the strength of the magnetic field at that particular location. Of course, the strength will be the same everywhere along this line because it's an equal distance away from the center. And there's some symmetry going on in the way the current flows through there. So we take the B field, the strength of the B field, and then we multiply that times the path around that circle. That's what we call the circulation. So circulation is basically equal to the strength of the B field. So take the absolute value, the strength of the B field, along the path. Of course, if the B field is directed in a different direction, then we have to, of course, multiply times the cosine of theta. But if we assume that the B field is directed along that path, in the same direction of the path, it will multiply that times the, uh, the circumference circumference, if I can spell it, that would be better off, say circumference, there we go. That is known as the circulation. And then if we divide that by the area of this region, so in this case it would be pi r squared, that is equal to the curl of the B field, or the curl of the magnetic field. Wow, that's pretty powerful. And so if the curl is then equal to mu sub naught times j, Remember that J is equal to I divided by the area. Now we have some similarity here. Notice that we claim that this is equal to uh, mu sub naught times the current density. And so which is equal to mu sub naught times I divided by the area. And of course, I would be the current enclosed in this particular region right there. Then notice we have, well, let me write it again. So, uh, here we have uh, the B field times the circumference. So for clarity, I'll write it again, divided by the area. So notice what we're saying here is that the B field times the circumference, which is known as the circulation, divided by the area is equal to the current enclosed by the loop times mu sub naught, which is the permeability of free space divided by the area. And then, of course, if you then cancel out the area on both sides, notice that the B field times the circumference, which is the circulation, equals mu sub naught times I. And notice that's the same as what we find here. And notice that B field, the strength of the B field, times the circumference is really equal to this integral right there. So what we're saying is that the the equivalence between this equation and this equation, if we divide both sides by the area enclosed by the curl, or the area enclosed by the B field, where we want to know it, and I divide this by the area, then this becomes this, mu sub naught times I divided by area, simply the current density, and this divided by area simply becomes the curl of the B field, and the curl of the B field is equal to the circulation, which is this quantity right here, the integral of B field times dl is simply the strength of the B field, which is assumed to be constant, the magnitude along this circle going around, times the circumference, 
That's the curl divided by the area, which is equal to uh, this right here, right? That is equal to this divided by area. And there you can see the total similarity between the two equations. So the old integral form of the equation, divide both sides of the equation by the area, you'll get the differential form of the equation. And that's why most people don't realize that this initial integral equation of which is known as Ampere's law, divided by the area, gives you the differential form of Ampere's law. That's where most people don't see the connection. And then of course, realizing that this is known as the curl of B, and the curl by definition is equal to the circulation divided by the area, and the circulation is nothing more than taking the B field integrating along its path, which is simply the strength of the B field times the circumference of the path, divided by the area, and you have what we call the differential form of Ampere's law, which is also known as the third of Maxwell's equations in differential form. Hopefully, that will set the tone for knowing what we mean by the differential form of Ampere's law, and I will show you some examples on how we work those things out.